Chelsea had a 100% win record at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, but we all know that records were made to be broken, as Chelsea fall to defeat by two goals to nil against Tottenham Hotspur, Graham Potter's men falling yet again, whereas Harry Kane gets another goal. Join me as we go through some of the major talking points that surrounded this game. Please make sure you like the video and subscribe, it really would mean a lot to me. But now let's talk about Tottenham Hotspur beating Chelsea by two goals to nil. The scoreline says Tottenham 2, Chelsea 0, when in actual fact there is a huge chasm between these two sides. I don't see Graham Potter's Chelsea, but I do see Antonio Conte's Tottenham, and therein lies the issue. When we look at the first half in the attacking momentum bar, there isn't really a lot to talk about. Both sides really feeling each other out, both sides not wanting to lose, and then they go into it at half time, and Tottenham came out with an absolute vengeance, getting that first goal within the first five minutes. The intensity, the aggression, and the willingness to go forwards was something that was in complete contrast to Chelsea, who came out flat, cold, and unready, unprepared to be able to go forwards and take the game by the scruff of the neck. The game then died after that point from a Chelsea perspective, and they really struggled to get anything going. I mean, although there is attacking momentum, although they have some possession, nothing really helps them go forwards. When we have a look at the player positions, I just want to mention some of these players, world-class players. Raheem Sterling failed to get into the game, so did Hakim Ziyech. Kai Havertz should not be playing here, I'm sorry, but he shouldn't. Joao Felix struggled to really pick up the ball in decent places, and then when he did have the ball, you did not have any singular Chelsea player move for the player on the ball. It just didn't work. Ruben loftus cheek struggled in the game. Enzo Fernandez tried to play some passes, but clearly there is no cohesion there. Clearly there is no chemistry there. Chelsea have made 4.3 changes on average between each squad. That means that they swap in around about four players per every matchday squad, and that's going to always hamper the chemistry that the squad is going to have. It's never going to work well. And then when we look at the player positioning, although it looks fine, although it looks good, I have some serious concerns because while I was very supportive of Graham Potter and the way that he's getting these players to play, having them in such positions, Ben Shilwell looks a decent area away from Koulibaly, who looks a decent away from Thiago Silva. All of these player positions are very good. However, no player is really understanding the next step forwards. It's almost like they're being trained to play football again. They look seriously lost and Rhys James should be bombing down this right hand side. Ben Shilwell should be doing the same. Raheem Sterling should be cutting inside with the likes of Hakim Ziyech who should be taking up half spaces. Joao Felix looked absolutely abject at certain points and then you have the enigma that is Kai Havertz who just doesn't look like a striker yet he's continuously being asked to play there when you have Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang and Fafana on the bench or even not playing. The amount of options that Chelsea have and the lack of cohesion that they seem to have as a unit is seriously worrying and if I was a Chelsea fan I would be terrified of the way that this could go. Contrast that with Tottenham and look at this you have clear lines, you have clear definition, you have understanding where players are meant to be. Davies making these runs down here, Rame Emerson Royale making these runs down this channel, Kulisevsky cutting inside as well as Richarlison, and then you have Harry Kane linking everything together, allowing them all to get towards the box with the same tempo, with the same speed and with the same directness. It's just night and day and I can't explain to you how lost Chelsea look. We're going to have a look at the stats now just to finish up because I think it's important that we just go over some of these key, key problems in these key areas. And when we look at the expected goals, it, look, it wasn't a fantastic game of football to watch. And there weren't too many goals, but there was two and it went to Tottenham's side. But 0.41 for 59% possession is just horrendous. Two shots on target the entire game out of the 10 shots that they had. Not clinical enough, but in fairness, they didn't even get anywhere near the goal to make any of these chances seem plausible. And it just seemed a, a step too far for them. And I can't believe I'm saying that because of the way that Tottenham have struggled this season, but it did seem like they just didn't know how to go forwards. And to be honest with you, when we look at it, they should have lost by a bit more if we count the duels, if we count the lack of intent, the lack of aggressiveness. Tottenham won their aerial duels, they won their ground duels, they had more tackles. Tottenham wanted it more, and that's probably the most damaging thing that I could say about this Chelsea side. 
They don't look like they want it. They don't look like a team. They don't look like they understand or have any chemistry with each other whatsoever. And why are they going to? They've all been thrown together at about, about the same time. Asked, and they're asking a manager who has barely known them anyway to try and make it all work. It's just an absolute shambles and I don't know where Chelsea go from here. Contrast that with Tottenham. Let's talk about them for a moment because I thought Romero was very good, aggressive in the tackle, yet understanding when to back off. Eric Dyer marshaled his back line very well and Clement Longley, as I said, supported Ben Davies when he needed to. Ben Davies and the likes of Emerson Royal, I thought, did a sensational job about getting down the flanks. Look how aggressive this run from Ben Davies is. Look at this positioning. It's very, very good, as with Emerson Royal. This is a new kind of Emerson Royal who is taking up further attention attacking positions. They're now mitigating the lack of a central attacking midfielder by having those extra players going forwards. Perhaps it was the time that was needed to get these players on side and understand how Antonio Conte wants them to play, because now they look like an actual attacking force. Kulisevsky is making good infield darting runs, as is Richarlison, who's come in for Hyunmin Son. And then you have Harry Kane, who got yet another goal, who really did as much as he possibly could for the Tottenham side. Very, very good indeed. But overall, in my opinion, this is a game about Chelsea rather than about Tottenham. The poor, poor form that Chelsea have been showing has only been exacerbated by the, cl by the real clear-cut nature of Tottenham Hotspur and the way that they wanted to go forwards. The understanding that they have of the Antonio Conte system in contrast to the lack of cohesion, the lack of work rate and the lack of effort shown by a very drab, poor Chelsea side. The game ended Tottenham 2, Chelsea 0, and I'll say it again, Chelsea look lost. That's it for today guys, thank you ever so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, if you did, please leave the video with a like and subscribe if you haven't for more content like this coming very soon. Make sure you hit that notification bell as well, you don't want to miss what's coming up in the near future, and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below on Tottenham, on Chelsea, and how you think things are going for both of these clubs. Like I said, that's it from me for today, thank you ever so much for watching, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week, and I hope to see you in the next one. But until then my friends, take care of yourselves, and bye bye.